Hey guys, how's it going? It's Ideas of Ice and Fire, and today we're going to be going over all of the current news for Denny Villeneuve's upcoming 2020 film, Dune. Frank Herbert's original science fiction novel, Dune, is being split into two movies, the first of which is set to be released on December 18th, 2020. Let's go over the confirmed cast for the movie. The lead role of Paul Atreides is being portrayed by Timothée Chalamet. Rebecca Ferguson and Oscar Isaac will portray his mother and father, the Bene Gesserit Lady Jessica and Duke Leto Atreides. Jason Momoa of Game of Thrones and Aquaman fame will be portraying Atreides Swords Master Duncan Idaho. Josh Brolin will portray Paul's weapons teacher Gurney Halleck. Stephen McKinley Henderson will portray Atreides Mentat Thufir Howitt. Actor Chin Chang will have the role of Dr. Wellington Yui. And we, of course, have Stellan Skarsgård as the Baron Harkonnen, Javier Bardem as Stilgar, Charlotte Rampling as the Bene Gesserit Reverend Mother Guy as Helen Mohayam, and we also have Zendaya as Chani. Layet Kynes has still not been named. There is a bit of mystery surrounding who actress Sharon Duncan Brewster will be playing in the movie. There was a rumor back a while ago that claimed that she would be playing a gender-swapped version of Leia Kynes, but that still has not been confirmed. Many have also speculated that she will be portraying the Fremen character known as the Shadow Mapes, which seems really believable. There is still no word on who will portray the Padishah Emperor Shaddam IV or his daughter Princess Irulan. The Fremen character Jamas and his wife Hera have also been cast. Also, several Sardaukar and Atreides soldiers are listed on the IMDb page. This hints at the fact that we will see a pretty significant battle in the first movie. This will likely be the coup that the Emperor and the Harkonnens will perform against House Atreides. On IMDb, Stephen Collins has been cast as the Deaf Trooper, which means we are in store for a pretty cool scene involving the Lady Jessica and the Bene Gesserit power known as the Voice. Now in the book, when Jessica and Paul are captured, the Baron makes sure that one of the men to watch them is deaf and therefore unable to be influenced by this power. In the book, Jessica finds a way around this and I can't wait to see how that scene works out in the movie. The main cast of the movie is great, as I've said before, and they all seem to be really excited about the film. Now, Oscar Isaac, who is playing Duke Leto, recently said that this version of Dune would be shocking and nightmarish. He told Entertainment Weekly, It's just a wholly, wholly different thing. I couldn't imagine anyone more suited for the tone of the original Frank Herbert novels than Denny. There are some things that are for lack of a better word, nightmarish about what you see. There's a kind of brutalist element to it. It's shocking, it's scary, it's very visceral. Isaac is using some very interesting language here. He describes the film as brutalist. Now, brutalism is a specific type of architecture. Brutalist architecture is very monolithic, grand, blocky, rigid. I love it, it totally fits Dune in my opinion. He also uses the word nightmarish to describe it as well, which makes sense because brutalist architecture to me does inspire a certain sense of foreboding. There is something ominous and stark about it, and almost alien and out of place. It should fit well with a movie that's set 20,000 years in our future on a different planet. It should look very different from what we normally see today. Humans are in a constant state of evolution, which is why many of the characters can almost seem alien to the reader in the book. Frank Herbert is telling us that the people of today will not be the people of 5,000, 10,000 years from now, especially if we become an interplanetary society. Culture, art, architecture will evolve as humans evolve biologically, and this would all seem foreign and bizarre and perhaps even frightening to many. As I've said before, the legendary composer Hans Zimmer, who's worked on movies like Interstellar, Gladiator, Crimson Tide, Inception, Dunkirk, The Dark Knight trilogy, will be doing the music for this movie. And Greg Fraser, who worked on Rogue One, will be doing the cinematography for this film. And I should say that in my opinion, as a non-Star Wars fan, Rogue One was probably the best one that I've seen to come out of this modern era. Unfortunately, there's not a lot of new information out right now. We are hoping for a trailer to drop any time between now and March of 2020. Interest in Dune has been growing steadily over the past many months, and even the cartoon South Park did a pretty interesting take on Dune. If you go back and look at the comments on my Dune video about the Spice Melange, you'll see that all 
of the comments are South Park fans now. They've taken over the comment section, which is pretty funny. And on one last note, Denny Villeneuve has also been named Filmmaker of the Decade by the Hollywood Critics Association. Congratulations, Denny. Fully deserved. Everyone, be on the lookout for the Dune trailer. And in the meantime, share my videos, spread the word about Dune. The fandom has to take part in making this film successful. Thank you for watching, guys. Hey, do you like stories about the machinations of space witches? Then maybe you'll like my upcoming graphic novel, Tadia, which is about the machinations of Earth witches. <laughs> Tadia is set in the fictional kingdom of Marath. The rise of the faith known as the divinity has caused the retreat of the benevolent beings that once guarded the barrier between the mortal world and the other world. Driven to extreme measures, a coven of witches known as the Daughters of Hakate created Tadia in the hopes that they can use her to shape the path of Mirath. Click the link in the description and get put on my mailing list for more information.